part in this. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how long have you been having symptoms? Fifteen years. About? Fifteen years. About fifteen years. Yeah. What age are you now? Thirty. Thirty. So you think it came on when you were a, late, a teenager, late teenage years? Well, yeah, tell me about what you had noticed yourself. It was getting slower and stiffer. Uh huh. And this had come on gradually over those years. When you were at college, you were at um, college. Did you notice it then? Found it hard to write then. Yes. You found it hard to write then, yes. So when you were doing your leaving certificate exam, did you have any difficulty? Mm, not particularly. No, no. So it was in college that you first noticed the problem with writing? Yeah. And uh, in the summer jobs that you did, you used to work as? I worked in the golf course. The golf course during the summer. Yeah. When did you first notice difficulty with the, on working on the golf course? From the beginning, how long ago was that? Eight years. Eight years ago, yeah. Okay, so that's when you were about 22. Yeah. And uh, what things have you difficulty doing now? The fine buttons. And yeah, fine movements. Yeah. Can you manage the uh, zip on your? I can. Yes. Yeah. I put on my socks and then Harder to put on your socks. Have you had any falls? No. No. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to we're going just to have a look at some of uh, the neurological symptoms and signs, um, and uh, just while you're sitting here, and then we'll go out and uh, see you walking. Okay. okay. Yeah. Patrick, can you just look at my finger and just follow it o over? Yeah. Slowly. And look up. And look down. So he, 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 pursuit movement is slow, but f and slightly. So look right over to the. But it is slower than my finger. Right, look straight ahead, Patrick. And then can you look to the left? And look to the right. Uh -huh. And look up. Look up as far as you can. Look right up at the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. And look down. Look right down at your toes. Look at your hands. Okay, so we can do this fully. Just, yeah, can you just, we're just going to open your eyes slightly just to demonstrate this. So, and I'm just going to move your head slightly. And you can see um, that Patrick has, uh, you can see that Patrick has significant axial rigidity uh, uh, affecting um, Particularly the neck muscles are very, very, very rigid. Um, when you actually try attempt to demonstrate um, the oculocephalic reflexes, just as we do this, difficult because he's so stiff. But you can see that he has uh, positive, what's called a positive doll's head reflex. And I'm going to get you. I'm going to go put your head back. Patrick, and then we're going to put it down. Okay, so I'm going to do it. You just relax. Okay, and you can see there the, particularly, the positive, oculocephalic reflex. I try and demonstrate it in looking down, but it's difficult in this city. Right, if I go right down. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I'll just do it once more on rotation. All right, it's fine. Can you show me your teeth? Show me your teeth like this? Yeah, okay, all right. One of the signs that um, is uh, useful to demonstrate is the glabellar tap sign. And this is um, uh, due to a loss of uh, habituation of uh, the blink reflex. So one just taps, taps the glabella repeatedly. And you can do it slowly. Some, some neurologists do it somewhat faster, like I'm doing. But you can see the persistence of the blink reflex. 
as long as you keep tapping. Normally, of course, this habituates a little. If one tapped the glabella in someone who didn't have Parkinsonism, uh, then the blink reflex would be lost. Uh, it wouldn't persist. One of the key uh, cardinal signs of Parkinsonism is rigidity. Um, and normally we test for this uh, in the limbs. Uh, but the distribution of rigidity sometimes is useful in the diagnosis. And in some patients, there can be mar quite marked axial rigidity. Um, one treat tests for axial rigidity by passive movements of uh, the neck muscles in particular. And in Patrick, I know, has quite marked axial rigidity. And um, it's very difficult to turn his head. Um, there is quite marked resistance to passive movements. Um, and I've just attempted to demonstrate this. Um, and I am trying to turn his head. This is not hurting, Patrick, is it? No. No, OK. I'm trying to turn his head, uh, rotating to left and right. And there is quite marked resistance. And I can feel that resistance. So I would call this quite marked, almost uh, quite severe axial rigidity. When you look at the arms, um, there is, uh, again, uh, significant rigidity. Um, perhaps more marked on the uh, left than the right, with resistance to passive movements. And there is a tendency to um, flexion. Can you put your hands together like that? And he, he can't really fully, even, you have to force them, and you can't really, he has developed uh, a degree of some flexion contracture of the fingers. Um, and, and really, and as you can see, the prayer sign, in a sense, is positive in that he, he can't put his hands together like that. And can you do this for me, Patrick? And he's got right marked uh, reduction in rapid alternating movements. And can you play the piano? No. no. And do this here. What I want you to do is that. And you can see he's got really marked reduction in uh, rapid alternating movements. And this, it is best to test in these three ways. Another way to test rapid alternating movements is to get, to get him to do finger grips. The past. OK. Just to display the range of movements. There isn't any tremor as such. Um, um, of any significance. And you can see the posture of the hands. Can you touch my finger, um, Patrick, and touch, touch your nose back and forward like this? Mm -hmm. And the other side, back and forward. And that's, there's really no, uh, no significant, uh, apart from the slowness in exec execution, there's really no abnormality there. So I think we'll just, See you how see how you walk. Is that okay, Patrick? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Um, and you can see that um, his gait is not bad at all. Um, but you can see that he's not keeping his arms across his chest, and you can see the position of his hands. There's this symmetrical uh, rigidity um, uh, and uh, abnormal posture. Just turn again and go back of his hands. So there's, it, it's completely symmetrical, in fact. Come back for us again, Patrick. So this symmetrical uh, akinesia, of particularly of the upper limbs, with this uh, abnormal posturing of the hands. Patrick, we're going to do that test we did before. It's called the pool test. I'm going to give you a, a, a jerk on your shoulders. I want you to resist. Don't let me pull you off your feet. Don't worry, I won't let you fall. OK. But I'm going to give you a, a quick pull, and then uh, we'll see what happens. OK, so don't worry. I won't let anything happen to you. So just resist now. I'm giving you a pull now. You can see. Yeah. OK. So that was, that was relatively a little pull. Normally, if, if it, that was a positive pull test. You notice that the patient lost his postural stability and started to go backwards. In that's, that is called retropulsion, retropulsion. Sometimes you can demonstrate it uh, in the forward manner as a propulsion. That was quite a small pull that I gave him. If, if it had the first pull hadn't been positive, I'd have given a stronger pull. So it's not necessary to do that because it's positive on the first. So that's a positive pull, pull test. 
and that's evidence of postural instability, one of the cardinal signs of Parkinsonism. We tried in a, a forward position. Can you turn around to face me? Yeah. And I will try, try and try again. So I just want you to resist me, Patrick. Okay, don't let me pull you forward. And then that's quite good. It, and we'll do a, just a good, quick one now again. Fine. And so he's quite. It's it's negative in the in the forward position, but positive in the going backwards. Thanks very much, Patrick.